When we think of jet fighters in World War II, our mind naturally drifts over to Germany and their Messerschmitt 262. However, over in Japan lived its distant relatives. Hello, I'm Stefan and today we'll be covering Japanese jet fighters in World War II. Slash that like button and let's begin. During 1942 in Germany, the Japanese were invited to view the trials of the prototype Messerschmitt 262 airframe. And in response, the IJN requested that the Nakajima company to start working on a similar craft to be used as a strike bomber. In 1943, a Japanese sub at Germany's insistence then made a trip from Japanese-controlled Singapore to German-controlled France. Hermann Goering, in July 1944, ordered that Japan be provided with blueprints for the ME-262 and ME-163 Comet. The Junkers Yumo-004 and BMW-003 turbojet engines and a complete ME-163. The Japanese submarine then made port at Lorient, France in March 1944, where they took on a scientific team of 18 passengers. Four of these were German, by the way and the gifts provided by Goering. They then left in August and traveled around Africa to get back to Japan. The submarine does make it safely back to Singapore in July where the scientific team disembarked with their personal notes, though the German cargo stayed on board. This is where the story takes a twist. While the team would travel to Tokyo, Japan by air, the equipment would travel aboard the sub eventually be sunk near the Philippines by the USS Sawfish. This very well could have been the end of Imperial Japan's pursuit of jet fighter craft. It wasn't. The scientific team still had their notes. And a cutaway drawing of the BMW 003. They also had instructional manuals of the two craft. So, they then got to work. For the most part, it would be the Mitsubishi Aircraft Company that would attempt to make a copy of Germany's ME-163 Comet, while the Nakajima Company would take on the challenge of recreating the ME-262. Now, this part may be a romanticization of the story, but with many in the Nakajima Company feeling that the war would be over soon with them on the losing side, the project leader gathered the engineers around saying, let's show the world what the Japanese are made of, knowing full well that the craft wouldn't be able to change the outcome. On June 30th, Nakajima conducted its first ground test of their ME-262 inspired craft that they called the Nakajima Kaika, Kaika meaning orange blossom. Mitsubishi's ME-163 Comet inspired craft would then make its first flight on July 7th. They would call it the JAM, Shushoi, meaning autumn water. The Nakajima Kaiko would have its first official test flight on August 7th, the day after the bomb at Hiroshima went off, and flew for a total of 20 minutes. On August 15th, 1945, the Pacific War would end. At least three of the Kaika airframes were brought back to the United States after the war to study, with only two surviving today. It's actually hard to say just how well the Nakajima Kaika would have done in flight, especially since its main purpose was to take on the fearsome American B-29 Super Fortress. To take it down, the Kaika, and for that matter the Shusoi, was armed with two Type 5 50mm autocannons. The specification of the cannon is on the screen now. The Kaika even though it was supposed to be an ME-262 copy, was not actually a copy. It was much smaller and the tail was a lot different. Also, unlike the ME-262, the wings on the Kaika could fold up so that it could be stored in caves when the Japanese were preparing for an American invasion on their homeland. The engine on the Kaika, designated NE-20, were actually tested by the Chrysler Corporation in 1946 for 11 hours and 46 minutes, which honestly makes them sound quite resilient. The specifications are also up on the screen now. In 
As for the Mitsubishi JAM, two of the Shusoi aircraft were taken from Yokosuka on November and brought aboard the USS Barnes in 1945. Sadly, one of them was scrapped in 1946. If you are interested in the specifications of this craft, they are also now on the screen.